out of the jungle. It's early morning. The sun is just beginning to peek over the tall mountains to the east as Christian missionary Richard Ellis and his 13-year-old son Hayden walk toward an old but sturdy single-engine high-wing Cessna aircraft. The air is heavy with humidity, and the sounds of the nearby coastal city echo across the narrow paved runway and bounce off the walls of the metal hangars resting under the trees. Both know that the early morning is the best time to make flights into the interior of the country. The air is usually calm, and the afternoon storms have yet to ravage the skies over the endless expanse of jungles and mountain ranges. Another beautiful day in paradise. Ah, oh, just smell the sweetness of those flowers. All I smell are diesel fumes from the trucks on the road. Huh. Does someone want to go back to his bed and then get up on the other side this morning? I'm sorry, Dad. I I'm just a little tired. Didn't sleep well. Must have been something I ate. You go ahead and get the wing ropes and I'll untie the tail. Okay. Are you saying that you don't like my cooking? I thought my stew tasted pretty good last night. I especially liked the carrots. Gave it sort of a, a, a zing. That must have been it, because my stomach was feeling zingy all night. <laughs> I know, I know. I, uh, it's not your mom's cooking, that's for sure. She knew how to make zing-free meals. I sure miss her. Me too. How long has it been now? Six months? Seven? <sighs> Just over five. Five months, three days, and 14 hours. She loved mornings like this. Yeah, I remember. Anyway, climb aboard. So, where are we off to today? I noticed that the tanks were full. Yeah, we're heading to Third River and that small village at the base of the mountain. They're building a new landing strip, and I want to check out their progress. When it's completed, I'll be able to fly our mission doctor right to their front door. We're also carrying a supply of anti-venom to the Highland Strip. Seems they've been having a rash of snake bites up there. Not good. No, it usually happens during planting season when folks are out in the fields. They reach down to pull out a weed and get nibbled by an overly friendly coral snake. Friendly, but deadly. Yep. Okay, checklist complete. You ready to fly? All belted in and ready, Captain. Oh, you can call me Dad. Okay. All belted in and ready, Captain Dad. <laughs> yeah, that's more <laughs> like it. Clear prop! Sure is nice up here. 8,500 feet. The air is so cool and it's quiet. Not even any radio chatter. Of course, we're, we're out of range of any communications network anyway. So it's quiet and peaceful, just the way I like it. And check out those amazing condors riding the updrafts along the ridges over there. Beautiful and graceful creatures and big. Man, are those birds big. Anyway, it's cool up here. Did I mention how cool it is, Hayden? Hayden? Huh? What? Did you say something, Dad? I was just saying that the mechanic's daughter was asking about you the other day, but I guess you're not interested. Sure, that's fine. Whoa, son, are you okay? I, uh... Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why are we here? Why are we here? We're going to check out the new landing strip up by Third River, and then we're... No, no, no. That's not what I mean. Why did we have to come here? To this country? Why did we come here? A and then Mom died of some disease. They didn't even know what it was. And, and then we stay here and fly this stupid airplane around like it makes a bit of difference to anyone. If we hadn't moved here, Mom wouldn't have gotten sick, and... And we wouldn't be flying all over these stupid jungles like some kind of stupid insect. Those are fair questions, Hayden, and they deserve a fair answer. So, why are we here? Tell me, Dad, why? We're here to save people. Save them from what? Snakes? You yourself said most don't want to hear what we're trying to tell them about God and Jesus and stuff like that. Besides, They've got their own gods. They're perfectly contented in their little jungle huts with their pigs and chickens and banana trees. They don't need us. We should just go back to the United States, back to where we came from. What you say may be true, 
but we also want to save them from fear, from sickness, from uncertainty about the future. Yeah, like we don't have any of those things. We get afraid, we get sick, and do we know what's going to happen? No! If we could see into the future, we wouldn't have to come to this awful place and Mom wouldn't have gotten sick. Young man, and your mother wanted to come here. She spent an entire year raising funds for this airplane and for the mission. And look where it got her. That's not fair, Hayden. No one knows the end from the beginning. We just have to... Dad! Dad, what happened? What's going on? There's blood and feathers all over the cockpit and, it, and the windscreen is gone. We must have hit a bird, maybe two. Sounds like the engine ingested one, two. We're losing power. The damage is really bad. We've got to get down on the ground fast. Down on the ground? Where? There, there's something but jungle down there. I know, I know. Wait, wait, wait. Over there, I see a bit of river. Maybe if I just carefully turn the airplane in that direction. We can at least land by the bank. Can you do that? I don't know. The controls are so sloppy. It's it, it's hard to keep everything... Dad, we're not going to make it. Hayden, put your knees together. Lean forward. Lock your arms under your legs. Then press your face between your knees. But, Dad... Just do it. We're about to hit the trees. Brace yourself. Brace yourself. Dad! Oh, where, where am I? Uh, what, what happened? Dad? Dad? It's so dark. I, I can't see. Wait, there, there's a fire. Fire? The airplane is on fire. Oh, no, no, wait. It's not the airplane. It's a small fire with a cooking pot above it. I, I'm... I'm lying on wooden boards. Uh, yes, I can see better now. I'm... inside something. A hut? I'm... in a hut. I see palm branches above me. And straw walls. But... where's the airplane? Where's Dad? 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 Wait. I hear someone coming into the hut. Who's there? Who... Who are you? I can't see you in the shadows. Where's my dad? What have you done with my dad? Take it easy. You're going to be okay. Who... Who are you? My name is Tomas. You've been in an accident. Wait. I can see you now. You're... You're a native. You're dressed like a native... But you speak English? What's going on? Don't worry about that. Just lie still. Where's my dad? What have you done with him? He... he was hurt. Badly. We took him to the doctor. Doctor? Looks like we're in the middle of the jungle. There's a doctor here? Well, sort of. He's the only healer we have. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You took my dad to a shaman? To a witch doctor? It was either that or to let him die. Is he... Is he going to be okay? How badly is he hurt? I won't lie to you. He's not doing so well. The crash was bad. You guys landed upside down in the river. Luckily, some farmers from this village saw it happen and got you out before you drowned. But your dad was injured. His left arm and leg were broken, and a piece of the wreckage gouged his stomach. Oh, no. We've set the arm and leg... But that stomach wound is still bleeding. We are doing all we can, Hayden. How do you know my name? Whenever your dad regained consciousness, he'd ask about you. I told him that you were pretty banged up, but that you'd be okay. Listen, I gotta get back to the healing hut. You just rest, and I'll keep you informed. No! I want to go with you. Ah! Take it easy, Hayden. Your dad is just across the way, see? Over there where the fires are burning. Yes, I can see the hut. You can watch everything from the doorway here. You just stay put, and I'll let you know if anything changes. You'll let me know what happens, right? Whatever happens? He's in good hands. The best the jungle has to offer. Now just relax. Rest. Ah. <sighs> 
We've crashed our airplane, and now my dad's life is in the hands of a jungle witch doctor, and I'm supposed to relax? Oh, oh Lord, help us. Please help us. I'm so tired. I, I'll just uh, wrap myself uh, up in the doorway. Uh, at least I can see the hut from here and maybe get a little rest. Dad, be okay. Please be okay. There's nothing worse than not knowing, especially when someone you love is in danger. As Hayden lay propped up in the doorway of the hut, he wondered if the familiar pain of loss and grieving he'd been feeling for five months after his mother's death was about to be intensified by the loss of his father. He felt alone and afraid, and as the night wore on, the fires at the healing hut grew dimmer and dimmer. What would tomorrow bring? And who was this mysterious jungle man who spoke perfect English? Hayden closed his eyes as pain racked his bruised and battered body. Time would tell. All he could do now was wait. The next morning, as Hayden watched the jungle lighten with the dawn, two men in a faraway room at the edge of the coastal city greeted each other. There was tension in their voices. What you got? Not much. Airport logs show that the Cessna took off just after daybreak 24 hours ago. The missionary filed a flight plan with our office and activated it with the tower. Trouble is, he never closed it. I see. His plan included a stop at Third River, then a strip in the Highlands, then back to base with an ETA of around noon. When he didn't close his flight plan, we started an initial search. So far, nothing. Well, that's rugged country up there. No radio communications or even navigation aids. Uh, this does not look good. For sure. The only way that we could even come close to knowing where he went down, if he went down, is to know the time of the crash. If he crashed. Then we could calculate his location based on how far he could fly from the takeoff to that point in time using the cruise speed of the Cessna. That way, we'd at least have a hint of where he might have gotten into trouble if he stayed on his flight path. That's a lot of ifs. I know the missionary. He's a careful pilot. He files his plans because he knows the dangers of being out of communication range with air traffic control. And he had his son with him. He's not about to take chances. I'll tell you what. I'll call ATC at the Capitol to see if anyone reported hearing an emergency locator transmitter in that area yesterday. They go off automatically when an airplane crashes. Airline pilots monitor that frequency whenever they're in the air. If we're lucky, maybe someone heard that transmission, and better yet, recorded the time when it popped up on their system. That's our only hope of tracking this guy down. Of course, even if they survived the crash, they may not survive the jungle. Meanwhile, back in the jungle, Hayden's father has improved a bit, and Hayden is able to briefly visit with him. How are you feeling, Dad? Uh, I've been better. It's been a couple days since the accident. Mm. I think the swelling on your stomach is going down a little. Uh, at least I think I'll live, uh, thanks to these wonderful people. Like Tomas here. Don't move around too much, Mr. Ellis. You lie still mm. and we'll see about getting you something to eat. How do fresh coconut and wild strawberry sound? And a banana. An appetite. That's a good sign. I'll check with the head waiter, see what he can do. Be right back. Uh, thanks, Thomas. I'm glad you're going to eat something. They've got really good food here. Hey, Dad. Yeah? Who is that guy? Uh, who? Thomas? You've never heard of him? No. Your mother and I heard about him. Uh, soon after we arrived, he's uh, kind of famous in these parts. He's uh, the man who returned to the jungle. What do you mean? Well, uh, according to what I've heard, uh, Tomas was born here. He grew up in the jungle and uh, knew nothing but jungle life. When his parents were killed in a hunting accident, he was devastated. Yeah, well, I can relate to that. Then, uh, one day he announced to everyone that he was going to leave. Leave the village. Leave the jungle. And he did. He walked to the city. He walked to the city? That's right. Walked out 
of the jungle. But that's miles. Mm, yep. Took him six months. They say he was a teenager at the time. My age? Yeah, close. Anyway, some kind people took him in and gave him an education. He learned to speak English because he said he wanted to move to the United States and have nothing to do with the jungle, ever. So why did he come back? No one really knows. Um, just one day, he announces that he's returning home. He packs a few belongings and heads out. Years later, reports begin circulating that there's a very unusual native who speaks perfect English living somewhere in the back country. I heard about him from the mechanic at the airport. We are all out of strawberries, uh, but I do have some fresh mangoes here. Will they do? Oh, yes. Hey, Tomas. Can I ask you something? You want some mangoes, too? No. I, I mean, yes. They look awesome. Here you go. Catch! Oh. Thanks. But that's not what I wanted to ask you. I wanted to know why you came back to the jungle. You were safe and sound in the city. You went to school. You learned English. You could get a job and get married and move anywhere in the world. You don't have to live like this in the middle of nowhere. I know that may seem strange to you. It's strange to a lot of people. But... Well, come. I'll show you why. Hayden, this is my village. The village of my birth. Look around. What do you see? Well, I see huts, people, trees, gardens. What am I supposed to see? When I came back from the city, there were pigs living under these huts. Always had been. Now, the pigs are gone. You see, I learned at the university how disease was spread and about nutrition. So I taught my people how to grow vegetable gardens and create orchards filled with fruit trees, healthy foods, and... Look here. What do you see? I, I see this woman getting water from the well. All the women used to have to walk two miles each way to the river to draw water. It was a dangerous journey. Snakes, caimans, they're cousins of alligators, you know. Wild animals of all sorts. The women put their lives on the line each day just to bring water to their families. So we dug a well. I learned how to do that in school, too. We oui, very happy. What a very good, Thomas. Very good. I taught her to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I especially like the Tomas very good part. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, now the water is clean and close by. No more snakes, caimans, and wild animals. Just clean, fresh water. And look over here. What do you see? Uh, a bunch of kids playing with some dogs. That's right, playing with dogs, not eating them. Yeah, when you put it that way, quite a change, I guess. Well, when I returned, many children were sick, dying from diseases brought on by a bad diet and unclean conditions in the village. They lived in filth. So we cleaned everything up. Now they're healthy. See those smiles. Yeah. Everybody looks, well, happy. There weren't many smiles before. I even brought back a few books on first aid and treating injuries and read them to our shaman. No more incantations and mumbo-jumbo. Just science. That's how he knew how to treat your dad. Tomas? Uh, are you a missionary? You mean, do I preach about God and stuff? Yeah. No, not really. But I know about God. There were many churches in this city, and I enjoyed visiting them. But usually, missionaries want to tell people about the God. They say they want to save people. That's all fine and good. But I decided that I was going to return to my village and show people what God was like. So, how do you do that, exactly? I didn't want to preach. I just wanted to live what I'd learned so that my people could be healthier and happier and not be afraid of disease or afraid of their gods. They used to worship fearful gods. Now those gods and those fears are gone as well. Instead, 
we think about the God of nature, the God of love, and about his son, Jesus. Hey, that's the search and rescue copter from our home base. They must have figured out where we are, must have spotted the wreckage. Looks like they're heading for the clearing. Go get your dad ready to travel. You guys are about to be saved. You mean saved again? And Tomas? Yeah. I've got to ask you just one more question so I can understand. Okay. What? Why are you here? Why am I here? Why are you here in this village? That's easy to answer, Hayden. I'm here because I love these people. I love them with all my heart. And when you love someone, even if it's a whole village of people, you have to be with them. You have to show them that you care. You just can't stay away. Oh, it sure is good to be back in our little home here by the airport. The doctors at the hospital tell me that whatever the shaman did for me in the jungle worked. Tomas taught him. Brought him medical books when he came back. Well, he saved my leg, my arm, and my stomach. Not bad for jungle medicine. But our little Cessna is now a permanent part of the riverbed. I guess the next order of business is to take the insurance money and start looking for a replacement aircraft. No. No? What do you mean, no? I want to go home. To the United States. Oh, well. I, uh... I can't say, as I blame you for wanting to leave here. It's been pretty rough on you, on us both. First mom and then the crash. I, I guess any young man would want to go You back. don't understand, Dad. Understand what? I want to go home to America and visit all those churches and all those people that Mom visited before we came here. They need to know the truth. What truth is that, Hayden? Dad, think about it. Think about that village. Think about Tomas. Think about what's up there in those mountains and in those jungles. I do think about those things, Hayden, every day. Well, then, you know that going home is the only way we'll be able to afford it. Afford what? <sighs> Dad, for a missionary, you sure are slow to catch on. If we're going to love the people up there in those jungles, if we're going to help them live happier, healthier lives, help them know about God, bring in more doctors and supplies, we've got work to do. Come on, Dad, get with it. The answer is obvious. We're going to need a much bigger airplane. What a wonderful lesson for us all. Love must be the motivation for any kind of mission work. Mm -hmm. Whether you travel to a foreign land or want to help a neighbor, you begin by loving them, just like Tomas did, just like Hayden and his dad. That's exactly what Jesus said in John chapter 13, verse 34. He told his disciples, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. Exactly right, Aunt Carol. And thank you for that exciting story. Now I'm thinking our listeners just might want to hear another story. We have many to pick from, you know. That we do. So simply select another adventure from this album and enjoy. <laughs> 